Mr. Chairman, Lords, Ladies, Gentlemen, thank you so much for um, inviting me to speak today. It's a great honor to be here at this significant event. And I am deeply honored to have heard so many of the things that have already been said. And I know it's getting late. I will keep my remarks and comments very short. Yesterday, The Guardian published a letter calling for urgent action to ensure that the human rights of the people in Camp Ashraf were honored. And that letter was signed uh, by, among others, a number of bishops from the Church of England, my own church, including my own Bishop of St. Albans. I can also bring the good wishes of the Bishop of Oxford, who wished he could have been here today. And also, over the last few years, the Archbishop of Canterbury has spoken out and done much in aid of the situation at Camp Ashraf. And I can assure you that the situation and the people involved remains very much at the forefront of his thoughts. Yes. Thank you. And one of the things I want to say, that this is a situation blatantly that has drawn together supporters across uh, political, national, religious, religious and ethnic divides. What it does is that we may not speak the same language, we may not have the same politics, we may not have the same beliefs in the divine or believe in, in a God at all, but we recognize one another as brothers and sisters and part of the same one human family. Thank you. Like the last speaker, much of my own involvement with human rights has been working particularly for the justice of women. And I have to say that what I believe what is good for women will also be good for men. They may not know it at the time, and they may have to adjust certain understandings of their privilege, but I deeply believe that really what's good for women is also long-term good for men. And my own work has been working for the justice for women to be universally recognized and treated as being fully human and allowed the same opportunities and accorded the same respect and value as men. And let me say here how much I admire the work that Mrs. Rajavi has done in this respect as well as what she does in so many other respects. On Monday, yes, yes, for Mrs. Rajavi. This coming Monday, the 56th United Nations Commission on the Status of Women begins in New York City, and over 2,000 delegates, men and women, will join together and discuss all the declarations and agreements and commissions that have been said about that affect half the world's population and, as we know, the majority of the world's workforce. The commission is also the time for checking up on the progress of the various agreements. And delegates are asked, how is your country doing? What laws and policies and practices have changed for girls and women in your country since last we met? And I wonder what the delegates would make of the news of Camp Liberty, and the threat it poses to the well-being and safety of the 1,000 women and girls in addition to the men of Camp Ashraf. And we know that we've heard so much about the um, more acute danger with the planned forced removal um, of the residents to the grotesquely, inappropriately named Camp Liberty. My views about justice and rights and freedom 
are an integral part of my religious and spiritual beliefs. The Christian season of Lent began on Wednesday. My hope, my prayer this Lent will be for true liberty, justice, and peace for the people of Camp Ashraf. Thank you very much. Thank you.